literally hit me in, the, uh, the, in my knees straight on and I hit the hood and just flew over. So uh, if you're willing to die for Allah, will you be willing to kill for Allah? I said, of course. And I said, I formed a sentence without thinking about it. And I said, Jesus, if you are true, show me yourself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome today to this Testimony Tuesday. And we're going to have a look at an awesome testimony of a former Muslim extremist, a Hezbollah fighter, that is Afshin Javed. He's now a pastor. But we're going to see of how the divine hand of God was upon his life. From a young person, he was kept, protected, uh, supernaturally when he had some accidents and then the main part which we're going to look at today we're going to do this in two parts so today we're going to look at the part what began his conversion hallelujah when he was in prison amen and he met up with a christian tried to curse him and then something happened he saw a power which he had never experienced before okay so let's have a look at this testimony and at the end i'll be back with some word of encouragement from the scriptures which we can get from this so let's check this video out now of Islam and uh, felt indebted to Islam because uh, in a way, as a young boy when I was growing up, I, I, had, I had done so many things uh, that, that I shouldn't have done and it's all my mother's fault because <laughs> she kept giving me the ideas, I tell you. She kept telling me like, don't do this and I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, so it's, it's, I always blame the parents for <laughs> every bad idea, you know. Uh, and so. Uh, but every time I would have an accident, I remember uh, one time I was uh, running across a busy road and just before I got struck by a car, uh, like every other time I had an accident, I saw a, a man, a tall man standing in the corner of my eyes and he would, the silhouette of him would be there every time I would have an accident. And every time he was there, I knew I would be all right. Uh, I got hit by a car, thrown, uh, I don't know how many meters how or feet. Were you I, was, I was probably about um, 11 or so. Okay. And so, and, and got up, I mean, from uh, this guy, I crossed the highway. So when I got struck, you know, by a car that was going highway speed. Right, right. I flew, I literally flew, you know, tried to be a Superman. It didn't work, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, got up literally without an injury. Wow. I had a small cut here, and that was it. After being hit by a car? By a car. I literally hit me in, the, uh, the, in my knees straight on, and I hit the hood and just flew over. So I, I, I'm going to get this straight. You had a number of accidents and encounters, and you saw this. The silhouette this. of a tall man that watches over me. And I would, I would always speak of him. Now, the only spiritual man that I really, really respected, you know, with, with all of my heart, without ever questioning him, was my grandfather. I asked him, I would tell him about these things. I, he told me that it is one of the imams of, of the Shiite Muslims, the first imam of the Shiite Muslims. He said, he is protecting you. And so I felt that he has, the Islam has, has protected my life, so I owe my life to, to, to Islam. Because you were told that, I, that that's where the protection was coming from. Exactly. And so you decided you owe your life. So what, what happened? What, what did well, you begin to do? As a Muslim, you, you, you do that anyways, because that means submitted to Allah. Muslim means submitted to Allah. Mm -hmm. and so, but I wanted to do more. So I had to start uh, studying the Quran from very early age, uh, memorizing the scriptures before I could read and write, you know. Wow. And so by the age 12, when I started actually officially doing all my duties to Islam, I felt it is not enough. And I wanted to do more. So I joined the Basij or the Hezbollah, as you know it here. Mm -hmm. And I served in the army some three years. <laughs> but, but I didn't think that's enough. So at age 12, uh, while I'm, I have turned into a man and you have to pray the five times a day, so on and so forth, all these things, I felt that's not enough. So I joined Hezbollah at age 12 and a half. At age 14, I uh, volunteered to go walk on landmines because I thought to be a martyr for Allah, that would please him. 
But they said that you're too young, you have to be at least 15 years before you can do that. So they said, will you, uh, will you be willing, if you're willing to die for Allah, will you be willing to kill for Allah? I said, of course. Uh, it's less painful, you know. So I joined the execution guards. We took people out in the middle of the city and we hung them. The very first time I uh, was part of the execution, uh, I noticed something died in me. The value of life. When you see somebody's life taken by violence, something dies in you. And so uh, from that moment on, uh, I wanted to, to have uh, at least some other perspective. So I thought, uh, how long does it take for someone to die? So I would time the different people and see how long does this one take? And uh, I noticed something uh, one time, uh, one of the guys we were hanging, uh, I just uh, made fun of him and he was, uh, he was so scared he went unconscious. Now I realized if you're unconscious, your body does not, uh, you know, because you're unconscious, it takes longer for you to die. So it took him about 15 minutes to die. So these are the type of uh, journey that I was on. I became heartless kind of thing. And so all of these I was doing because I wanted to, to know uh, that I am pleasing Allah. Why? Because these were infidels. These were the kafirin, the munafirin, you know, the, the ones that were against the ways of Allah. And they should not see mercy. Uh, my grandfather gave me an idea. He said, why don't you go to the United States and share Islam with this poor misled Christian, i.e. you guys. You know? <laughs> so, so, so you were being sent. Absolutely. You, you were being sent to us poor misguided Christians here in, a, a, as a missionary. Yes, because you needed Islam. help, right? <laughs> <laughs> so... I came out of, uh, and I thought, wow. wow, what a great idea, because in Islam, that's a great honor to, to, to be able to share the faith with another non-believer and then see them convert to Islam. Uh, Allah gives you uh, 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 goodwill so that, that in the day of judgment, when he measures your good deeds against your bad deeds, yes. hopefully that will be counted and overweigh the bad and you will have a chance to go to heaven. For this reason, I, I came out of Iran in 87. Uh, in Pakistan, I uh, continued my involvement with, with uh, a Shiite movement while learning about the Ahl Sunnah, the Sunni Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, traveled to Malaysia with illegal documents. Uh, illegal documents. Of so course. You, you were <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to get, make sure the translation, yeah. he said illegal, not a legal document. Uh, yeah. So you're traveling with yeah. illegal documents yeah. and you get stuck. Some, some 30 passports. 30 passports? Yeah. I was suffering from multiple nationality disorder. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you, so you're traveling with these phony passports and you get stopped in Malaysia. Yes. I, what I, happens? Uh, I, uh, I was arrested, put in jail. Uh, while in jail, they recognized that I have uh, extensive knowledge of Islam. Uh, most uh, Muslims in the world do not speak Arabic and do not read Arabic, so they, they cannot read the Quran. In wait, wait, wait. Is, Say that again, because most uh, Western uh, Christians and believers don't understand that, don't know that. Most Muslims don't speak Arabic. Well, it, it's like, yeah, because most, actually most people think that all Muslims are Arabs, which is totally wrong. It's right. like if, if I call all the white people Nazis, you know, it's just like, <laughs> it doesn't work, you know. There are actually different languages, different people. And so they all have their own language, you know. He uh, said that. I, I, <laughs> okay. hey, I'm brown. I can say anything, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I get it though. Yeah. So, but uh, doing but uh, and when I was in jail, I, they recognized that I have an extensive knowledge of Islam, and so that was recognized by by the prisoners as as a leader, as someone that could teach them things. How old were you? I was seventeen. At seventeen. Age. Okay. Yes. So I. Um, I was practicing Islam on a regular basis. I was there. Someone asked me a question. Why are you here? 
I said, oh, someone uh, betrayed me. And uh, once I get out of here, I will find them and I'll kill them. He says, no, maybe uh, you're here for a different reason. I said, what would that be? He said, because God has brought you here. And when he said this to me, I said to him, God, you're talking to, about God to me? Look, I pray five times a day. I read the Quran once every 10 days. I cover to cover, you know, I cover the whole thing. You're telling me about the Quran? I, I, I served in the army for three years. I've laid my life down. I've done everything. It says, not about that God. And immediately when he said that, I heard a verse of Quran that we say as Muslim, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. And he's telling me there is another God. So automatically, this guy is an infidel. But I have to have him confess it with his own mouth that there is another God. Because when you say the biggest sin in Islam is shirk, meaning there is somebody equal or beside Allah. There is nobody equal or beside Allah. And this guy is saying there is another God. This guy is a pagan. So I said, what God are you talking about? And I was just sitting, I kind of put my foot up so that I could jump at him as soon as he confesses that he is an infidel. And so he says, I am talking about Jesus and he has not finished with Jesus. I was in the air trying to land a punch. My brother grabs me in the air and turns around to the guy and says, are you stupid? Do you want to die? I'm his brother. He doesn't talk to me because he thinks I'm not a good Muslim and I'm infidel. If you talk about this kind of thing, this guy will kill you. And you're in the same room with him. So that became my plan. First, I must this guy, I find out he's Christian, I must convert him to Islam. And that actually inspired me to be even a more fervent Muslim. Many Christians don't realize when you share your faith and you come at him with Jesus is God, it makes the Muslim guy want to be even more. Before that day, they were drinking alcohol, they were smoking. After that day, they will stop drinking. When you tell them about Jesus, Jesus is God, a Muslim guy will say, what? I'm going to become a better Muslim. <laughs> it's a mystery, but it's true. Before that, they were a Muslim. They are not praying. They are not giving homes. I still have not met any Muslim that gives 20%. You think Christianity is bad, giving 10%. Muslims are supposed to give 20%. We can learn something good from them. <laughs> so I thought, hey, you know, I want to be a more fervent so I can show this guy about, about, uh, about Islam and the ways of Allah. When he did not convert, I was planning to kill him. That was the next plan, plan B, right? Plan A didn't work, plan B. While I was doing that, one night I was praying and uh, I had gained spiritual powers out of Islam and I was praying for people and whenever uh, Allah is just. So if there is an injustice being happening, you know, then you pray for curses to be placed on people and that's what I did. And people would get hurt. But I wanted to acquire more powers while I was um, meditating one night uh, in, in Quran, I had a spirit appear in the room which uh, caused fear. I, immediately I knew it's an evil spirit. I knew that I knew that I knew that it's an evil spirit. And immediately I wanted to fight it, so I started to use the name of Allah. And I thought that would be enough, but that, was, that did not uh, do anything. 
I said now you were meditating on the Quran absolutely what when this image appeared to you absolutely okay please go on so I said uh, I must I must introduce myself as a Muslim as a believer in Allah and so I gave the te statement of faith that did not help I recited the Quran did not help and so uh, desperate now the Christians are laughing but, uh, but this is serious this keep is, going brother this, is, keep this going. is no laughing matter if you were there you would have, <laughs> you would have, you would have needed a change of underwear or something you know? <laughs> I, tell you, I am I am in a bad position I'm like I don't know what to do I have used everything I have learned yeah and I said in Farsi my own native language I said God help me Khuda. and when I said that I heard the voice as clear as you hear my voice tonight and he said bring the name of Jesus that's simple and I, I, I didn't really think about it I didn't question it it was like a man that is drowning and someone offers a rope yeah you don't ask why why did you give me this color <laughs> I hate yellow you know you know, you just grab on, you I know. I love it. I love it. I, I have seen married couple that the, the husband has thrown himself because of the wife, but the <laughs> wife offers and he grabs on, you know. So, but uh, while this thing is happening, I just opened my mouth without thinking. These words came oh, out and I said, I formed a sentence without thinking about it. And I said, Jesus, if you are true, show me yourself. And before I was finished with that sentence, that spirit was gone. Hallelujah. Now, of course, praise God. Praise God. Of course, I'm, I'm a Muslim, and that is not how I converted. That was the beginning of my confusion. <laughs> I was, I was no, very... No, this is, this is important. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is the beginning of your confusion. Confusion, why? Because, uh, I mean, the, the, say, the demons must run at the name of Allah, but it didn't. It must run, according to the uh, studies that I have done, it must have run by all these uh, scriptures I used, but it didn't. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So this is what we're going to see for this week. Next week, remember, I'll bring part two of how he actually met with Jesus. Amen. You've got to watch that one and you'll see. But anyway, what we can take from this part one of this testimony of this uh, man of God is now a man of God, is now a pastor. But we can see there that, um, you know, he had a zeal for God. He had such a desire for truth, you know, and what he thought was truth, what he thought was right. He went all out into it, you know. As a young person, he said he was already willing to walk upon landmines. You understand that? He was willing to give his life up for the cause which he believed was right. But then, praise the Lord, he had an encounter, amen, when he was in prison. So I want us to have a look at a scripture there, and we can learn from this. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. You know, so someone can have such a desire for God in what they think is right. So we have to pray for people that they encounter the mercy of God and then they walk into the right way. So let's have a look at this. Romans chapter 10 verse number 2. The Apostle Paul says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. So there's people who can have a zeal for something, so passionate about something, so passionate about a cause, you know. But it's not according to knowledge, not according to what is right. But Praise the Lord that he says that when you seek me, you will find me. You know, like uh, maybe you've heard this quote before, and I believe it is true. Anyone who is looking for truth will eventually land up at Jesus Christ. That's it. So this man was searching for truth. And the great thing is when he now was met with a Christian who did not want to convert, he thought either I'm going to convert this Christian or I'm going to kill him. So he couldn't yet kill him and now you are trying to pronounce a curse upon him but let's see what does the word of God say about that you know there was a prophet in the Old Testament who tried to curse Israel and it did not end well for him but let's have a look at what the scripture says about uh, maybe someone has once tried to curse you before and you are wondering maybe people told you hey they're putting curses on you there but anyway let's see what does the scripture say about that numbers chapter number 23 and verse number 23 it says surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what has God wrought? So there's no enchantment against, against you, against uh, Jacob. 
against Israel. That is modern day, now we understand it in the New Testament, whatever is referred to as Israel is referred to as you, as a believer in Christ. So there's no witchcraft which will prevail against you, hallelujah, because at the end of the day, people will see the hand and the power of God. So this is what happened with this uh, Muslim guy, this extremist. He was trying to put a curse upon this Christian in the prison. And then that demon is like a boomerang. It came for him. And now when it came for him, this is when he realized, what should I do? And he cried out all he could pray, every prayer he knew by his religion, every understanding he knew. And then he heard a voice, which I believe was the Holy Spirit and said, try the name of Jesus. He said, bring the name of Jesus, which means try the name of Jesus. You know, and then from there, he just used the name of Jesus and the demon fled before he was even finished. He said before he was even finished making that statement. And from there, he says this was now the beginning of his confusion. Confusion. Why? Because he thought that Allah was God and he thought that the Muslim way was right. So he was now caught up. But he, because he experienced the power in the name of Jesus and he realized that this is what saved him. And next week, we'll see what happened, uh, the continuation of this, what happened when, from, from that point in time, after his confusion, what happened and how Jesus appeared to him and now he's a minister of the gospel. Amen. So that is the power of it. We can also have a look at Proverbs, you know, Proverbs uh, chapter 26, verse number two. It says that as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse which is causeless shall not come. So no one can just throw a curse or, or speak a word because you are trying to, according to him, bring justice <laughs> upon an unbeliever. So there's no curse against you which shall stand because you are righteous in Christ. You are made clean and pure by the blood of Jesus Christ. Anyone who speaks against you is speaking against Jesus. Amen. Because he lives and abides in you. Amen. You know, maybe just in closing... I'll just show you because at times we wonder how can someone do something so wicked. You can see he said he was participating in hangings and all that. And it was like to him it was it was nothing. He would make he said he made fun of one guy. That was before before Christ, right? And but I just want to show you where does this come from? Because it's in the word of God. First Peter, first Timothy, sorry, chapter number four. Verse number one. It says now the spirit expressly uh, speaks expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, seeking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And it goes on and on. So what does it mean? When someone's conscience is seared with a hot iron, it's where they have no value for life at the end. Any teaching which does not appreciate life, you know, is not from God. You know, God is not about killing and destroying. He's about life and life in abundance. So afterwards, after his conversion, he realized that he was in the wrong way because he was, he was killing for his faith. You know, and even in the old time, I remember there were some Christians back in the day who the crusaders, they had no understanding of this. And they also thought we need to, they ought to kill for their faith. You, you see this. But now we know Jesus came and he showed us the way. And he said that if your enemy slaps, you should turn the other cheek, isn't it? So we are not about killing our enemies, but we are desiring the salvation. So here is a pastor, powerful testimony. He was, you know, against Christians. He was against uh, everything which he thought was wrong. But by the mercy of God, he saw the power in the name of Jesus. And that led to his salvation. So if you got something from this video, just subscribe. Uh, give a like, a comment. Uh, if you want to ask me a question, you can send it through. I'll be dropping those videos, those Q&As on the Christian Kingdom Walk. Amen. If you have a question, you can send it through. But I'll be back again to tomorrow with the Word of God. Tomorrow I'll share on the mercy of God. Amen. In line with this testimony. And then don't forget, next week we'll look at part two of uh, this man of God, Pastor Javid's testimony. Amen. So have a blessed week. I love you so much. Remember, your Heavenly Father, He loves you even more. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you haven't received salvation in Jesus Christ, say this prayer with me right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I believe that you died for me and that you rose from the dead. I declare that I am saved and born again. I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Subscribe and follow on social media platforms, on YouTube, The Word of Truth, Jason Paul Pullen, on all your podcasting platforms, The Word for Today with Jason Pullen, Spotify, Audible, Acast, Apple Podcasts, and many more.
You can also follow us on Instagram, The Word of Truth JC. You can follow us on Facebook, The Word of Truth JC. You can follow us on Twitter at the word of underscore truth. There's free books available in the link below as well as on Amazon.com. If you'd like to partner with me, you can go to PayPal, paypal.me forward slash jpj or via scroll jpjs at gmail.com. Send an email, the word of truth publications at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Amen.